How do you communicate with the anxious preoccupied in an effective way? Well, this is Joshua War with the Change Me, and we're continuing a series on communication, and now we're kind of more into the attachment styles part with communication, and more specifically, the anxious preoccupied. But before I talk about that, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I have my doctorate, I got my master's, I have taught at two major universities and also taught, I taught pathophysiology and pharmacology. I've thought, started four businesses, three or four businesses, multiple houses, real estate. I've been very fortunate in the things that I've, that I've done, but if, the reason why I bring that up is I'm going to be a nerd and I'm going to dive deep and truly understand what's going on so I can be able to present it to you and in a very highly and effective manner. But let me tell you about my channel. We have relationships, we have single dad and parenting, kind of combine them both. And then you have personal growth and attachment theory. And so again, those are going to be really going to put the relationships and attachment theory into this a little bit more. But before we go into the ancient preoccupied and how to effectively communicate with them, let me tell you a little bit about the background with ancient preoccupied so we can get into it. Let's go. Now, with attachment theory and attachment styles, you have a caregiver and a child, and that child really learns certain modeling by that caregiver, how to love, how to handle situations, and so how to become more secure. And so what happened was they kind of came up with these three different styles, but we're gonna talk about today more anxious preoccupied. Now, anxious preoccupied have a negative view of themselves but a positive view of the people. And that's usually because in childhood, you either had those helicopter parents that did everything for them, which would mean the child realized, oh, maybe I can't really trust what I can do because somebody's always there. Or you had inconsistent parenting where the, the, the child didn't know what was they're gonna get. Somebody bipolar, somebody really happy for something they did, but then two days later, the same thing they did, they got in trouble. And so they don't know what's going on, so they're always anxious and they always think that, okay, I'm at fault. Kids are like little narcissists when they grow up and they start to think that everything is about them because that's all they know. And they think if a, like a parents get divorced, it's all their fault. Or if a parents yell at them, they'll blame themselves in those, in those arenas. And so understanding the anxious preoccupied, you have to really handle them very delicately and be able to reassure them and really teach them how to really believe in themselves over time. But let's get into it, the tactics and ways to really truly effectively communicate with the anxious preoccupied. All right, guys, let's talk about it. What are the ways to actually communicate with the anxious preoccupied? Let's start with number one. And it's gonna be listen carefully. Listen and respond. From Hitch, in the movie Hitch, he was talking to Albert Brenneman and he was like, don't look at her, their mouth while they're moving. Don't think about what you're doing tomorrow. Be present and listen and respond so you have something clever to say. because. Most anxious preoccupied want to talk just so they can be able to get their thoughts organized, but sometimes they do want your perspective, but if you don't know what's going on, then it's like, why am I even talking to you? Which could be very problematic for the anxious preoccupied. Number two, be open communication, right? So be open with yourself, which make them feel good because they're going to be open. Like anxious preoccupied, they're going to, they're going to be out open as much as they can, right? Uh, without being too open to scare you away. But if you start to be open about your feelings, about how you, how what's going on with you, open about your day, about what's going on, they'll feel comfortable that they feel closer with you. Okay. Understand that they need boundaries set. So helping them set their own boundaries. So for example, saying, "Hey, I really would want you to come to meet my family, but hey, 100%. If it's something you're not comfortable with right now." There'll be other family things we can do, okay? I just wanna make sure you don't cross your own boundaries to just make me feel good, okay? Because I don't want any resentment on the back end. Because at the end of the day, if you get resentment, it's not gonna help the relationship anyways. So help them understanding that their boundaries are important to actually keep the relationship safe is gonna help maybe change their perspective on speaking up about the boundaries because anxious preoccupied are horrible about Maybe they're, they're, they, they think their boundaries are like obliterated. They're just faded, right? They're just completely faded. Next one, express gratitude. I mean, to be honest with you, we should be doing this, these, all these prior factors to everybody, but definitely gratitude. I think so much we focus on the negative, but there's so many positives that people do. And I think we could, if we could just verbalize it instead of say, thinking that it should be already done, and that's the simple things like open the door or even just give them somebody giving you a kiss or, or anything like that. Be pretty, thank you. I appreciate it. And what kind of helps them kind of trust 
kind of help them um, feed into like trusting other people, but it also gives them confidence that they're doing the right thing, which can help build the confidence in themselves. Reassurance and attention. Okay, so because of what's going on, I mean, I talked about this in another video, but anxious preoccupied, they need reassurance. And sometimes it could be a kind of a lot, but if you kind of tell them like, hey, if nothing's changed from one point to another point, there's no need for reassurance, all right? But if you feel like something's changed and you, f you feel like this changed, let me know, because then I can reassure you. Because if somebody's not going to be willing to reassure that anxious preoccupied, it's going gonna, it's gonna to eventually build up all this animosity that's going to come back and, and bite the person in the behind. So just reassure them. In, in the beginning, just do it. But after a while, I was like, hey, you know, I just want to tell you like from my, what I feel. I'm, I'm okay with reassuring you, but I really feel like nothing's changed. So like in the future, if you feel like something's changed in my behavior, now, I'll be definitely there to reassure you. I can probably just tell you, hey, I'm thinking about work or this is and that. And uh, because anxious preoccupied are really good at, at um, like being detectives and figuring things out, right? No triggers from both sides, all right? So understand the anxious preoccupied's trigger, what's causing them to activate, and yourself. I mean, preferably, you should be working on healing through those triggers, but in a relationship, you need to be respectful of them so you can be able to communicate effectively while they're working on those triggers. And so navigating through those, but also understanding what yours are so when they try to press on your triggers, you are able to be aware of it so you can maybe keep them at bay to make sure the conversation ends with a positive solution. And then therapy. I talk about therapy all the time. And I have a video on how to pick a great therapist because sometimes if you don't pick the right one, you think therapy is not for you. But therapy is good because now you have a third person there, party, that can be able to navigate both sides to help find a solution from that. And, and with somebody that doesn't have any skin in the game. And then lastly, you want to encourage them to meet their own needs. So Tony Robbins talks about six basic human needs that everybody needs. And you can look them up. I'm, I'll put them here actually here. And, and this is basic needs, but there's personalities that feed into those needs. I'm gonna go into detail with that. But let's say these, these basic human needs. So what happens in, in, with anxious preoccupied, because they have to trust other people, they feel like they need to be codependent and get their needs from that person, which is when you get codependency, that causes problems. Codependency causes a person that can either take advantage of you because you need me so I can be able to leverage that, or you get to a point of something where you codependency, like if the person is not there, then what happens is now you feel empty. So healthy ways is both people can be able to fulfill their needs independently and then when you're together, you can su supplement and support the other person and get those needs filled faster. But you're not desperately needed on that situation, right? So really helping them be with their self-care, teaching them how to be able to get like security and, and certainty and, and getting love and connection for themselves by meditation and, and also going out and doing like spa days and things like that. These things are important for them to start to trust themselves. So. These are the tactics or ways to communicate with ancient preoccupied, but let's get to the final thoughts. So final thoughts, guys, final thoughts. Communication is like, for all the attachment styles is important, any people, but for the anxious preoccupied, it is desperately important. They need open communication, they need reassurance, they need the gratitude, they need to be filled up. But the key of it with the anxious preoccupied is teaching them how to trust themselves how to believe in themselves, and so they can come the, their whole selves in the conversation, and so it won't be so much giving from the other person, because a lot of times a person will have to do a lot in the beginning with the ancient preoccupied, but it's okay. Once you, they build the trust within the, the, the group, they'll start to believe in themselves. So, guys, communication, is, again, is the key to everything, and I'm starting to realize that more and more and more. I think this might be almost the final part of um, communication. I might do maybe some breakdowns down the road, but guys, I appreciate you staying on this channel. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you can, just to kind of get the support, but also help um, start to help me move forward into this community in, in the YouTube world. And as I end all of my video things, I tell people, hey, slow down. If you have kids, slow down. Just give them a hug. Love them. 
Tell them that they're worthy. Tell them that they're amazing no matter what the world tells them because that's your child. And they're going to do amazing things if they so choose so. They need to hear this not just once. They need to hear this on a consistent basis. So, I mean, to be honest with you, every time you hear it, watch a video, hopefully this puts it in your forebrain so you go out and you go do it. And every time you do it, every day, and it really will give so much value down the road for those individuals. Anxious, preoccupied, dismissive, avoidant, no matter what the attachment style is. But until next time, I'll see you when I see you. Thank you.